and go with me over to Matthew chapter 4. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 4, amen. Hallelujah. Yes. chapter, pardon me, Matthew chapter 3. Go back a little bit. I want to start somewhere else and then I'm going to go to 4. Amen. Matthew chapter 3. Amen. And go to verse 13 in Matthew chapter 3. To the world, to the world. chapter 3 glory unto God amen verse 13 beginning in verse 13 then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him but John forbid him saying I have need to be baptized of thee and come it down to me and Jesus answered him and said suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh unto us to fulfill all righteousness, my Amen. God. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway up out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son in whom I am well Please. Yes. Now go over to Matthew chapter 4 and go down to verse 10. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Then let's skip down to verse 17 for the sake of time. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let us pray. And Father, on this day, in this hour, in this moment, Father God, we give you glory and praise. Father God, we ask right now, Lord God, that this word that is going to go forth, Lord God, be a word that will bring you honor. A word, Lord God, that will correct where correction is needed and encourage where encouragement is needed as well. We're praying, Lord God, that this word, Lord God, will transform lives, Father God. Above all things, Lord God, for the very purpose of the church is to get people saved. And even this word would get someone saved, Father. They would cry out unto you, Father, saying, what must they do to be saved? Oh, my dear old shade, and we'll pray the sinner's prayer with them, Father God, and get them in right standing with you, Father God. Lord God, it is not, Lord God, for form of fashion that this is done, but, Father God, this is all done to your glory. Hallelujah. Yes, we bless your name. We glorify your name. We honor your name, Father God. Yes. Oh, Lord God, let flesh not rebel before you. I rebuke, I rebuke flesh right now. I rebuke fleshly nature. I rebuke fleshly pride. In the name of Jesus, that you would be glorified. Hallelujah. Oh, and flesh not satisfied in this day. Now we bless you. I find the spirit of division. I find each and every, each and every negative thought. Ha, shut, take a little shot. In the name of Jesus, I cast it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak from the oracles of God Almighty that the word shall go forth unimpeded by these things, but the word shall go forth and it shall begin to cut where it needs to cut. It shall begin to shame where shame it needs to take place. That the hearts of the people are turned to you, Father God, and turn to Spirit of pride, I find you right now. 
in the name of Jesus, that God be glorified. Now clap your hands and glorify God as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I glorify God on this morning. Amen. Amen. I thank God for, for the hearts of the people who are pressing out this morning. Yes. But on this morning, I want to be able to draw your attention for a few minutes from your device. Draw your attention from your cell phone, your Android, your, your iPhone, because uh, uh, Androids are phones too. Your iPhone, your Android, draw your attention from all of those things. I don't want you to be distracted by your Facebook, your Twitter. I don't want you to be distracted by your Instagram and, and, uh, and Spookygram or whatever else it is that you may happen to be on. I don't want you to be distracted by any of that. I want you to be able to pay attention for just a few minutes to what it is that I have to say to you because this should bless your soul. This should bless you in a mighty way, my God, my God. Hallelujah. I want to get your attention. One, one I will only reference as I compare it to the one in which Jesus went to. I want to talk about wilderness experiences, amen? I want to talk about wilderness. I want to talk about two wilderness experiences, amen? I want to talk about two wilderness experiences. One I will only reference as I compare it to the one in which Jesus went through and his example to us on how to handle our desert experiences. We all have desert experiences. If you're not in one, you're about to go through one. If you're not in one, you probably don't came out of one. Amen. So we all have desert experiences. In this sermon, I want to talk to you about coming out of the desert. How you are to come out of the desert, my God, my God. Because when you come out of the desert, there's some things that you should be able to go through that you previously may not able to go through. I want to minister to a few people who aren't perfect like I'm not perfect, hallelujah, to tell you how you come out of your desert experience. It's going to make a big difference in the way that you are associating yourself with God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give you a sermon title, Coming Out of the Desert. Hallelujah. Coming out of the desert. Yeah. The event which, which we call the temptation of Jesus is a perfect showing of obedience to God and application of the dominion in which God has given us. God has given us dominion. He's given us dominion. Let me make sure that you heard me right. I know there are times where my lips may get in the way and you may hear dominoes, but I said dominion. And when I mean dominion, I mean the power and authority to be able to speak things or not as if they already were. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Dominion, dominion. In a way, the temptation was a courtroom drama unfolding. It was unfolding as two cases were presented. One case based on ill-gotten gains that someone was trying to keep. And the other based on the righteousness of God endowed power that was intended not, intended not for the enemy to have, but was intended for mankind to exercise this power. My God, my God. See, the devil having authority on the earth is crazy. Uh -huh. It's totally, it's insane. The devil having authority on the earth is like an eagle diving into the ocean to kick the sharks out. Well. The devil having dominion on the earth is like a shark jumping up into a nest on a cliff mountain and kick the eagle out and nesting on some eggs. It is not the way God intended it. And when anything, whenever anything goes against its design, then the results are never fruitful. On, the results are never fruitful whenever it goes against its design. Oh. What I mean by fruitful, I mean the positive things that come out of you yes. doing what God has told you, what you were designed to do in the word of God. Amen. My God, my God. Now understand, everything is designed to withstand some adversity. We all have adversity. We're going to go through some things. Everything is designed to stand some adversity. Everything can survive a certain amount of pressure. The reason is the design of God. The more you lift weights, the more you're able to lift them. The more you walk, the further you'll be able to walk. So in God's plan, we are designed to be resilient. We're not designed to be the wimps that we are turning out to be. In God's plan, we are designed to be strong in power and might. In God's plan, we are designed to rule this earth in full dominion of what God Almighty has for us to do. In God's plan. Amen. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. With each test, 
and God's plan comes the testimony. With each test comes the testimony. With each victory comes the ability to go through the next test. Right. Hallelujah. Some ask the question, well, why is it? Why is it? Why the temptation of Jesus? Why? Why? After all, this Jesus, he is the son of God. What does he have to prove? He's God in the flesh. What is it that he must show? But understand this, beloved. Since man had been the one to lose dominion, it took a man to retrieve and bring back that dominion authority into the hands of mankind. Hallelujah. It took a man to get the dominion back because a man gave the dominion away. My God, my God. And that man had to go through some of the same tests that were previously failed at before. My God, my God, my God. Give me Genesis uh, 2 and 7. Genesis 2 and 7 in the King James Version, please. Genesis 2 and 7. I want to teach you something this morning. Read it for me, please, sweet. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Amen. Keep that in mind. Man became a what? A living soul. Get 1 Corinthians 15, 45. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Amen. I'll read it. Go ahead. And so it is written, uh -huh. the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Anybody notice that? The first man, Adam, became a what? A living soul. He became soul. a what? A say again. Soul. He became a living soul. But the last Adam, it didn't even say the second Adam there. It said the last Adam became what? A quickening, quickening spirit. spirit. There's a difference in that. Oftentimes we just run right on by it. So, so though the first Adam was made in the image of God, the second Adam or the last Adam, Jesus came with the authority of God Almighty. Yes. Oh my God, my God. See, there's no way that man in his limited ability could possibly get dominion back from the enemy because the enemy had well entrenched himself. The enemy had made it where man could not possibly get it back because of the legality of everything. But God And he came down and he became the quickening spirit. Amen. What's the difference in a living soul and a quickening spirit? What's the difference? What's the difference? See, there's a difference. There's a distinct difference because, see, a, a living soul is a created being. It's a created being, my, my God. In other words, it took someone to create that living soul. When God breathes into dust, he created a living soul, my God, my God. But see, see, the difference is that a created soul is a uh, living soul is created, but a quickening spirit is the creator. Huh? A quickening spirit is the creator. It's so often missed. But a quickening spirit is a creative. Force. That's a Bible study series within itself, mm -hmm. my God. But in the message today, why was Jesus required to come through flesh to restore us? It wasn't because God did not have the power. It wasn't because God did not have the might. Mm -hmm. Huh? But God said what he would do would not be by power. It would not be by might, but it would be by his spirit. It'll be by his spirit, a quickening spirit, my God, a quickening spirit. By his spirit, Mary conceived. By his spirit, Christ came forth. By his spirit, a pronunciation of this is my son in whom I am well pleased occurred on that day when Jesus rose up by the water. And by his spirit, redemption has come forth into the earth realm, which allows us to tap into this power. Amen. And I... I I like Romans 5 and 17, which gives so much clarity. There were so many scriptures that talked and compared Jesus and Adam, compared who they were. But I love how Romans 5 and 17, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Mm -hmm. Adam was the offender, so death reigned by one. Much more, they would receive abundance of grace 
and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in one, in life by one, Jesus Christ. Adam loose death into the earth realm. Huh? He lose death into the earth from her. Anyone remember back in the day, back in the school days when they used to make us read all the time? Nowadays, I don't think they make them read much. I'm just saying. But, but back in the day when we used to have to read all the time, one book that we read, was, uh, one series of books we read was about uh, Greek mythology, right? We read things about Greek mythology and stuff, right? And, and, and one of the stories in the Greek mythology that we read was called Pandora's Box. It's called Pandora's Box. And in Pandora's Box was contained all of these terrible things that, that when Pandora opened the box, my God, my God, they were loosed into the world. Death, destruction, wickedness, and such. In a way, in a way, that story is true, but that story happened because of what Adam and Eve did. They opened Pandora's Box and allowed these things to rule in the world. My God, my God. You may still say, you may still say that, how is that Jesus, Jesus, why did he have to die? Huh? But look, this is one thing Jesus did. Jesus called death on the carpet by visiting the place that death ruled and exerting the victory he achieved while he was in a flesh suit. That victory, though spiritual, was achieved while he was in the flesh. But some still ask, why, why is it that, that the temptation of Jesus, but why did it occur in the desert? Out of this victory, several failures of mankind were addressed. I was thinking about that, and there's probably quite a few more, but I, I can recognize a few that, that were addressed. The first Adam, he fell because of lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Huh? Jesus did not fail in the desert to those two things. Huh? Uh, uh, the man Moses failed because he failed to be obedient to the word of God. Wow. Jesus was obedient to out to the word of God. Right. Huh? The Israelites failed due to lack of faith. But for every year they spent failing in the desert, Jesus spent one day of redemption wow. for them. Wow. My God, my God. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, in a perfect example, taught us how to come out of a desert. Come on. Take note here. Really think about how he came out of this. Let's first go back to the ascent. When he came up out of the water. When he came up out of the water, he immediately was called by Holy Spirit into the desert situation. Huh? Holy Spirit descended with a voice of triumph and he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Now it's time for you to go to the desert. Too many of us are complaining about the little things that we go through, my God, my God. When you need to understand there are times where God himself will take God, my God. Lord, I'm going through. Well, yeah, okay, all right. All right. But you're going through because I want you to go through. You're going through because there are some things that I need for you to learn out of this experience. Out of this experience. Oh, my God, my God. I want to talk about a few things here. A few. I'm going to call them hows. I noticed some hows of this. H-O-W. Some hows of the desert. Okay. Huh? Some hows of the desert. The first how is how we come out of the desert, out of the desert, has its roots in how we go into the desert. Huh? How we come out has its roots. In, in other words, how we come out of the desert is rooted somewhat in how we were when we went into the desert. Amen? Up until the point of arriving at the Red Sea uh, and having Pharaoh behind them and the sea before them and desert all around them, the children of Israel constantly complained. Not because of the plagues, because they were not affected by the plague. It was the Egyptians that were affected by the plague. It wasn't because of the plagues that they complained. My God, my God. Oh, my God, my It wasn't because of that. I could see if they had frogs all around them. I could see if they had flies all around them. I could see if they had bloody water. I could see if they had all of the plagues that were occurring, including the death of 